I will start the recording now. And we can start our meeting today. Thank you everyone for coming to the session today. This is the Graduate School of Education of Nazarbayev University. We are hosting different webinars and different titles. Mainly it's about the uh, academic programs that GEC offers. So every year we admit around um, 70, 80 master students on a state scholarship. We also offer um, scholarship for the international students. And today we are here to talk about one of the master's programs. This is the master program in educational leadership. And within it, we are talking about the concentration of school education. The uniqueness of this session is that we, we will have two students uh, sharing their experience and also alumni insights about studying this degree at Nazarbayev University. So my name is Aidana. I'm a senior manager for academic and student affairs. Mainly I'm the uh, student services manager at GEC. So you are welcome to ask the questions whenever you have it. And you can use uh, the audio or, uh, or the chat box. So today, um, special guests will be RLM, Elizabeth and Galina, sharing their experiences uh, doing the degree in school education at GEC. So overall, um, let me uh, talk about the Nazarbayev University. Nazarbayev University was established in 2010. Two years later, GEC has been established in 2012. So every school at Nazarbayev University has its strategic partners. Uh, at GEC, it is the University of Cambridge and University of Pennsylvania. During the talk, we'll talk about the role of the partners overall in school life. And here I'm just basically sharing the, some nice pictures of our campus. Here you can see the student dormitory inside and the view. And also this is the also inside of the uh, student dormitory some gym facilities, the library rooms, some of them, and our great swimming pool that the most of our um, me, campus residents like. Yes? The slide is not changing. Sorry. We, in which page are you in? The first one. Sorry, let me go there then. Oops, there was some technical problems. Let me close the PowerPoint and open it up again. So we were on the page one. So did it change? Can you see the page number two? Not yet. Okay. It still doesn't work, right? Yes. Well, it says now my participants can see the shading. Can you see the next page now? No, not yet. Okay, so let me close. The Maybe you have to open in full page, like open in um in the window. Yeah, not small yeah. like this. Yes. Try right. that. I hope that works. So can you see now? I open it in different view. Okay, good, good. So let me start right from the beginning. I was talking about the speakers of today's session. It's Arelam, Rizabek, and Galina sharing their experiences with us during this session. And I was sharing some beautiful pictures of our campus, student dormitories inside and out, and also some of the pictures of the library and the gym that we have on our campus. Students and uh, campus residents are free to use these facilities uh, during their stay. 
And here is the list of the academic programs that we offer at the Graduate School of Education. It's three master's program and one PhD. Um, within the master's, we have one big giant program. This is the educational leadership. And within it, it has three concentrations, three tracks. And each track is a separate program. It's higher education, school education, inclusive education, and multilingual education. And we also have one PhD program, PhD in education. So the school education is highlighted because we'll talk about this program today. So the uniqueness of the Master of Science in Educational Leadership is that it, sorry, I'll be just switching for a moment. Um, while RLM can present her presentation, RLM, are you ready? Yes, if you let me to share my screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, so good day, everyone. My name is Arelon. I am a first year MSc student in educational leadership, school education at NUJC. And today I'll be giving a presentation about my experience and some recommendations for applicants. First of all, I'd like to start with the beginning of my journey. How did it start? Why school education? I was planning to apply for NUJC for about two years, but I did it once in Sharp in 2020. Uh, I still remember that late night phone call with my friend. I was studying in another country and I called her and I was complaining that I don't want to do MBA here. I want to go back to Kazakhstan and uh, uh, try a new. She said, go for it. And that was my starting point. And searching the new website, uh, I came up with the idea that GC is the one I'm interested in. So I started disturbing a new admissions in contact on Instagram and uh, in their email. Considering my experience, I decided to apply for school education because of my relevant background. I'm a bachelor of education and acting teacher at school. And by the time of application, I had nine months of work experience. So as a teacher, I want to learn everything that I can about the Kazakhstani education system and GEC is the greatest place to do it. Uh, there are many skilled talk professors and guest speakers across this system who can share their experiences with you. Now I'd like to share my experience as a student. So this semester is all online, yet it is both exciting and stressful. And what is helpful is that you actually begin one discipline, complete it, and then go on to the next. So during the course of four months, we studied like five subjects. Lessons are held three times a week from 3 to 7 p.m. with asynchronous sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which are for your self-work. And uh, unfortunately, I was never the one to read extensively, but here you'll be required to do so in order to comprehend what your professors and your group mates are talking about. At the same time, it is quite informative. And surprisingly, I found that there are no usual tests. You are always generating new ideas, writing essays, expressing your opinion uh, on a particular subject, and conducting extensive study. Um, although only our last course had a final test of 40 questions, it was the only course that where we had an actual test. So generally you earn your grades uh, by participating in group projects, writing essays, uh, delivering presentations. So it is not about memorizing test questions, but about you expressing your thoughts and backing them up with uh, relevant references. And as our professors love to say, if you want to cry, don't cry alone. This must be the most famous quote in GC, uh, which means if you're struggling, you will get support from your professors, from your group mates, and uh, will be able to handle it no matter how hard, uh, how tough your study is. Also, what I didn't expect here is that actually students opinion matter. After each course, you evaluate the discipline and suggest improvements if there are some and they will consider, consider it for the next year's study. So you can see some screenshots of our studies here. This was a guest lecture. Uh, she used to work in the um, Ministry of Education and she was sharing with us her experience. And this is our last course where a professor was telling us a joke, trying to cheer up our moods. And this is one poster from our um, one course where we try to be creative. We called our group Armchair Reformers and we made such poster. Now, uh, I'd like to move on to recommendations for future MSc students. First, uh, think about reasons why do you want to study here. If it is only for the sake of a new diploma, uh, you will not enjoy your experience and will likely to regret it. 
when you will be given the task to write 1500 words, what do you think about the school education system in Kazakhstan? Also, I'd like to suggest you to read related articles in English to expand your knowledge and uh, build an understanding about school education system. For example, uh, check through OECD reports, NAP and IEC reports. Uh, and please don't limit yourself with these only three sources. Uh, you can take notes from others one and search for more. It will assist you in comprehending the general picture of, about the school education system. Also, be familiar with APA reference beforehand and practice it. Uh, in the beginning of our study, me and my colleagues, group mates, were struggling with this APA, not knowing what is it, how to use it, how to write. And if you practice it beforehand, it will be a little bit useful for you. Now, let me give you some tips for admissions. Prepare yourself in advance. Um, take into account your work experience. Uh, while some students lack job experience, most of my uh, colleagues are outstanding teachers, uh, most of my group mates. Therefore, if you come to GC with a relevant experience, uh, it will be more interesting for you. For example, now I study something, I go to school, I see that in practice, and it's not only theoretical knowledge, so it is also practical. Next, uh, do not attempt to write your motivational letter in a single evening. Try to answer the required questions. Uh, as far as I remember, they will give you five to four questions and try to include your answers in a, in a motivational letter. And also be specific about your goals. Uh, for example, if your whole motivational letter is about, uh, I want to improve education system in Kazakhstan. I want to study in NU because it is the top university in Kazakhstan. This may be an ineffective motivational letter. Uh, instead of that, identify particular areas of education that pique your interest and how you may assist uh, you in developing as a future leader. Also, uh, contact, uh, contact admissions. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to text them, uh, preferably via email. Uh, it is better um, and safer if you ask something 50 times instead of submitting the wrong document. So in my case, uh, I didn't know that we need to translate um, and uh, notarize our work proof experience. So I had to do it afterwards. So don't make yourself problems and ask uh, admissions departments. Also think about potential workplaces and positions after your graduation, who you can be after you graduate, where you can work, what can you do? Think about these areas too. And also about the recommendation letter. You can actually get a letter of recommendation from your academic supervisor and employer. If you have one, they will use a special system. Don't forget about this. If they have a corporate email, uh, my recommender believed that she, in the system, she was just filling in some leading in questions. Uh, and at the end, it turns out that those leading in questions were actually my recommendation letter. But if you don't have um, a recommender with a corporate email, don't worry. Your employer, for example, uh, can give uh, their recommendation with a stamp, official stamp uh, of the organization. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. I would like to say that don't worry. You need to believe in yourself. If hundreds of students could do it, you can do it too. Uh, the application period is the most exciting. I now look back on April, 2020, and I recall how delightful those moments were for me. And I would like to say that just be focused and enjoy the moment. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions here, I may answer them. Thank you, Arela. So we have some time uh, for the questions. If you have some question to Arela, please ask now. If not, we can ask questions at the end and now we can go to the second speaker Galina. Galina is a second year school education student at the Graduate School of Education. Galina, the floor is yours. Sorry, I was muted. Can you see the screen? All good? Okay, yes. perfect. So my name is Galina and I'm a second year master's student at NUGSC School Education. Let me share some information about me. 
So the last 15 years I've spent abroad, primarily teaching the English language, um, various subjects, not only English, but also literature at times at schools and colleges um, abroad. So my life took me on a working and traveling journey to South Africa, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, and the Middle East. Just for some of the attractions here. So why um, Nazarbayev University GSC? Uh, firstly, in the recent years, working at schools, that, that is where uh, most of my working experience is, is based. I developed interest in educational leadership because I started noticing various problems and um, management or leadership problems. And I thought that I would like to make a difference. And then I started looking for uh, programs abroad and in Kazakhstan. And I came across um, this program and decided to apply. I quickly got in. It wasn't too difficult for me. There are some people apply many times, but I, I didn't really struggle. Um, but anyway, um, so I found that uh, Nazarbayev University is one of the leading universities in Kazakhstan and the program is in English. That, that, that was one of the deciding factors for me uh, because my career is connected to this language. And also I uh, looked through uh, the pages of faculty who are experienced foreigners and uh, foreign and local professors and who are also active researchers in their field. And as a citizen, a citizen, I was also qualified for state grant. So these are the main reasons. So this is my uh, NU journey so far. Most of it I spent online, all of it actually. So I'm not sure what is going to happen uh, in, in, in the spring semester. We haven't been notified yet, uh, but it's expected to be on campus. So I spent online in 2020 and 2021, because I'm based in Malaysia, intensive uh, first semester. So be prepared to work hard, um, but also try to work smart. Uh, find, um, find time for many things, but I'll talk about it a bit later. So uh, when it comes to uh, group and individual work, you have choices. Uh, just, um, I think Arali mentioned uh, some of those things and the tasks that you would do. So it's very important that you um, think, right? So it's about thinking, not only about uh, memorizing things. So that was a very good point. So I also found that uh, most instructors and professors are empathetic and accommodating, uh, though to a certain degree, but uh, they are willing to meet you halfway. Engaging and thought-provoking tasks, you can expect with your group mates and on your own helps from group mates with whom I had also interesting discussions on WhatsApp and Zoom. So um, it's been a great journey. So this is uh, one of the photographs that I have together with my uh, group mates. We took it online separately with uh, the letter, Happy Teacher's Day. Everybody had a letter. And then we sent it to our professors and instructors. This is on campus, some of the photos that I was sent. Uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, professors are pretty approachable. Mm. This is Mr. Matthew uh, Courtney. He is uh, in the research methods too, quantitative research. If you're interested in that, yeah, so that's him. He's from Australia and uh, he's having coffee with um, some of my group mates on campus. Uh, this is Robert Gordon. Uh, he's gone now. I think he resigned. Uh, he was an academic English professor, uh, instructor. And uh, this is also another instructor, I think his wife. And these are some others. I think Daniel is with us today. He is also research methods, if I'm not mistaken, in a different group, inclusive, I think, education. And uh, another one is Noreen uh, Durani, uh, curriculum management. The rest are my group mates. So I think I really enjoyed the visits on campus and uh, they saw that huge swimming pool. Some of them posting videos on the group. I was really excited to see them. Okay, so this is uh, the most important topic, inevitable thesis and um, that is never ending. But don't fret, yeah, that this, this will pass. Uh, it began in the summer of 2021, started writing the first chapter, second and third. I remember I finished uh, the first drafts uh, at the end of August, <clears throat> I think. 
And then it carries on, continues into the autumn of 2021. And it will continue, obviously, in the winter and spring of 2022. This is my academic uh, super, uh, yes, uh, supervisor, thesis supervisor. His name is Mirat Zaltajik. Okay, these are my two group mates. So he is our uh, supervisor. So what is it like to write a thesis and um, what I've been doing so far and what I've done so far? Um, it should be great fun, but it's really. <clears throat> so let's have a look. So we should decide on the topic as early as possible and uh, try to do it during the research methods courses, preferably the first one. Uh, try to think of the interest already then. And also, I must live through a great deal of literature and save the articles, books, so you need to write uh, your thesis. This is important uh, so that you know approximately where to look for what later. To make notes of relevant uh, to your topic quotations of interesting ideas and um, yeah, try to record them somewhere. To start writing as early as possible, uh, must pass the ethics exam online and have your research approved by the NU Ethics Committee. So this is also essential. Must modify your chapters a few times after receiving feedback from your thesis supervisor. Be prepared to do that. I have done too. Must keep in touch with him or her and ask questions and for help. And should begin your data collection in November and December to avoid being overloaded with work in the next semester. I've almost finished my data collection actually um, into schools. So I don't feel stressed right now before going on holiday. So make the most of a study at NU. These are some of the tips uh, apart from thesis tips. So take learning um, of academic English seriously and uh, make appointments with the NU Writing Center for need. So don't underestimate uh, this um, thinking that uh, because you can speak English then you can write it as well. So just um, make sure that uh, you follow the conventions of writing in academic English. Yeah. Just try to evaluate your skills soberly, you know, approach it with, with grave, uh, with gravity. So manage your time by using a calendar or some time management app, because there will be times when you really will, will not know what to do and when, because it can be a pile up sometimes of assignments, etc. So just be prepared to manage your time. Allocate enough time to for rest, exercise and having fun with loved ones as well. It's also very important so that managing your time, something can help you with that. Ask your family members to give you privacy during certain hours and specific days so that you're not uh, bored during that time, uh, during the time of your study. Speak with your trusted group mate or university counselor when overwhelmed with the amount of work and pressure. It's quite important. It can help you um, feel more relaxed and confident. Try to build a positive relationships with group mates and professors so that you can easily turn uh, to them for help but also be open to lend a hand to someone in need. And occasionally attend other workshops and seminars to learn new things and spice up your daily routine. So I think this is also quite important. And I think Arali mentioned that as well. And there's one more thing I want to talk about, email etiquette and the communication etiquette. Um, so in English, uh, communication is slightly different. And sometimes, you know, um, most professors are foreign professors and they all speak English. So uh, it's quite important that um, not, not be maybe very straightforward sometimes. Um, it's, it's, it's quite important to be more polite, uh, either on email or uh, verbally. And my plans after graduation, <clears throat> I don't have grand plans. But the first thing I think I'll do, I'll take a long break on some tropical islands, provided I graduate. <clears throat> but on a serious note, I believe it's important that I put the acquired knowledge into practice, just like with any knowledge. The goal is to make um, a difference in school education systems, whether in Kazakhstan or abroad. And my thesis topic is teacher collaboration, which is connected to a non-positional teacher leadership. I'm passionate about teacher professional development that aims to turn teachers into capable leaders and trailblazers. It's time for the teaching profession to move up the ladder, especially in the developing countries. But um, pursuing further studies is also an option, uh, perhaps a few years later.
this is my contact information. If you'd like to ask me questions or ask them now as well. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Galina. That was very interesting. And our um, today's participants can see that, I mean, the experiences the, of the first year at GEC and the second year when you are deeply into writing the thesis is quite different and at the same time exciting. So if we have any questions now, we can ask Galina or Arela. If not, we can ask it at the end of today's webinar. And our last but not the least speaker of today's session is a graduate of this program, Lisa Beck Tiniza. Lisa Beck, hi, the floor is yours. Hello, thanks, Aidana. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'll also share my screen. It's a presentation I made. It's kind of um, having a lot of uh, pictures, so I think it's going to be fun. <clears throat> okay, so my name is uh, Rizbek and uh, I've just graduated uh, in New Jersey. I mean, not just, but in June, yes. Uh, and uh, like, I mean, um, it's like the fresh, um, yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> it's like my first year of working right now after getting this education. And uh, I'll uh, briefly share uh, three things. So three stages in my life before in New Jersey, during in New Jersey, and after in New Jersey. Uh, I think, as Adana said, the second year students and the first year students' opinions, I mean, like experiences are different. And mine, I think, is also different because I'll uh, cover this topic, what to do after you graduate, after you um, finish this program. Uh, so my journey began kind of simply, like um, I think everybody's in education. So firstly, you graduate as a teacher of English, and then you start doing something. Yeah. Uh, so I started to work at NIS after um, getting my bachelor's degree in uh, teaching English and French in Karaganda State University. Uh, and I started working for NIS, and it was cool, uh, really. Um, I think it's a great foundation for teaching. Uh, there are a lot of different teachers, local and international ones. Uh, there's a variety of social professional projects that help you. For example, here in this picture, it's uh, RedX. It's a reading project um, where teachers share their favorite books and stuff with their students. And students are very good, you know? They are so inspiring and inspired and like uh, together, you know, you feel that you can change the world actually. Uh, also, uh, what's cool at NIS, you know, uh, you can see here in this picture, we with my colleagues, my boss and I, we are uh, doing some dancing, I don't know, but it was a seminar uh, on like co-teaching, co-working, just feeling better with each other. And there are a lot of projects like Bastao project, for example, that's happening in the first year. I'm sorry, my cat is making some noise right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, uh, for me personally, it was the introduction to modern teaching because uh, honestly, our universities here in Kazakhstan, uh, classic universities like uh, Karagana State, uh, they usually teach uh, some kind of old-fashioned stuff. Like, um, as we did when we were in the Soviet Union, I think. But now we need some different things, and that's why um, we had this uh, modern teaching, yeah, and some changes about Kazakhstan education. Um, excuse me for one sec, please. Okay, one moment. Sure, no worries. So... Um, the good thing about this online learning and the learn space is that you see the people and the real life of the people, you know, um, at the screen. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Please continue, that... Elizabeth. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, then in the second year of NIS, uh, we started uh, action research. Uh, so it's like the research on how we are doing our teaching, and it's. It was actually like uh, the first hint for me so that uh, I need to do something with my education, with my teaching, with my classroom uh, to make it better, to make it uh, kind of, um, what's this word? Related to modern education maybe, to global trends. Uh, and also like I am interested in management 
and I started researching education in Kazakhstan and globally, and I started questioning education system in my school, and it all got me into in New Jersey, actually. So I understood that there are some flaws in our uh, like current education system in, in schools, and that's why I actually applied, uh, because I wanted to uh, do something with it. And in my motivation letter, I uh, elicited these problems that I'm having personally, and then uh, I got admitted. And I think it was because of this. And uh, before it, I had been trying to get into NU for five times, and it, it was my sixth time, and I, I was really excited. I was really happy that I finally got there. And my education began. So this is the second stage, uh, the NU just experience. Um, this was, so our first intensive session on campus was in August, and we had two courses, two classes, educational reforms and context, here you can see our final work, our project work. Um, it's like a pyramid and there are different, like these all layers, they represent the education system. And these people are stakeholders, like students, um, you know, uh, parents, uh, teachers, administration, uh, administration uh, policy makers, policy reviewers. Because like we studied it and then in, in the end we uh, showed it, showcased it, that we actually learned uh, then we had introduction to educational um, leadership, which was really cool, you know, like why, um, why we call ourselves uh, leaders right now. Um, because it's not like you always have to be like the principal or the vice principal or the director or something, but it's more of uh, what you're doing in your place right now. So if you're a teacher, you can be a leader in teaching. If you're a manager, you can be a manager, I mean like a leader in management and so on. And um, I met a lot of wonderful people, professors, uh, classmates, um, managers at NU who were really supportive whenever uh, we had any problems with our, um, like anything, you know, it just felt like home. You felt like you can ask anything you want. And, um, you know, like in Harry Potter, in, in Hogwarts, you'll always get this answer when you ask, you know, you'll get help. Um, then this picture actually, uh, I feel nostalgic about it because uh, it was uh, 8.40 a.m. before the lesson, so uh, 20 minutes before the lesson and I need to read a lot of articles like, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's like the only time you can get um, some salad and coffee and, and work and study. Uh, it was really interesting, though it was intensive, it was uh, kind of difficult to get everything in time. But uh, by it, you also learn to uh, build up your schedule so that you don't miss, because you know it's an intensive session. So you visit uh, Astana because we are like not um, in Astana. You visit it and then you have to hang out with your classmates. And at the same time, you have to somehow uh, manage to continue studying, you know? And, and that's why it's, it was a challenge. And it teaches you actually how to be um, good at planning. Um, and some pictures of our classes. So this was the final day of our uh, leadership class uh, with Professor uh, Elaine. You can see her here. And us all inspired, you know, to, to do something to lead. This was our final day with Professor Anna, who was also just, um, you know, a wonderful teacher. Uh, also, we are so, you know, like, uh, happy, smiling. This was our last day with uh, Professor Daniel, who is here. Yes, in this conference, I mean. Uh, studied research methods. Um, so it was my experience during it. Uh, the faculty members are awesome, really. So this um, like feeling when you are uh, with these people, you know, you, you really feel like uh, changing the world, actually. It, it, it actually was our one of our classes. You know, we're, we were doing some Padlet work, uh, like online, like uh, like in team, and there were a lot of people, and you know the class is going. Uh, unfortunately, we had only three intensive sessions on campus. Others uh, other sessions were held online, and because of the pandemic that started in March of uh, 2020. And we have to study online and we have to work on our thesis online, which is really hard to do when you are not in campus, when you, you don't see these 
people who inspire you, who motivate you, you can just, because it's really hard, you know, to concentrate when you are at home and you have your, um, like usual home problems, you know, to get some food, for example, or to clean your apartment. And at the same time, you need to write this draft of your first chapter and, you know, like, uh, it's due tomorrow and you don't have any, any, any energy left. But, uh, so it's really hard, but overall, um, we managed to do it. My personal thesis was um, actually about an endowment fund, which is like a fund uh, in um, an organization, usually it's uh, non-commercial, uh, when donors can give some money to any company or to any organization. Uh, here we have a school, I'll not name it, but we have a school in Central Asia, in Kazakhstan, that has an endowment fund with it. And I study the attitudes of stakeholders on this fund. So I asked, interviewed um, parents, students, teachers, uh, not students actually, parents, teachers, um, school, school administrators about how they feel about um, this fund. Like, is it good? Because it's very good, you know? And, and I found out in my research that um, the benefits of this fund are just um, enormous, if you can say it, benefits. They're just, yeah. And finally, I finished. And, you know, you can see me like smiling. Actually, you, you don't see me smiling here, but uh, I'm actually smiling. <laughs> and I, I got my um, diploma long, long awaited. Uh, and it was gold. It was so actually beautiful. Um, while actually working, so this is like the after stage, the stage after an university. But actually, I started working for a um, university, which was my dream since my childhood. I always wanted to be in higher education, uh, though I started my career in school education. So it was kind of shift here, uh, but I uh, got appointed as a lecturer, uh, Faculty of Language Education, where right now I'm sharing my experience of teaching um, because my students are future uh, school teachers. And that's why I share my experience and also I share the knowledge I got uh, during study at the New Jersey and this philosophy, I'd say, yeah? of uh, life when you are at the New Jersey, you, you learn it, you know, like you are become a leader, you are, you want to be a leader, you want to change the world in your place, you know, like everybody in, 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 their, in their place. And after, or can I say thanks to New Jersey, what I got finally from it. So vast knowledge and education system of Kazakhstan globally um, at all. So now I can see, for example, um, just deeper, you know, the picture is more clear. I um, got some research, research experience on master level. Uh, it's not PhD level yet, but um, I will go there you know, someday. Uh, but on master level, um, I understood how to make a, a research, uh, not maybe uh, so, um, I'd say, <clears throat> not so prolific or not so um, intensive, immersive, I don't know. But uh, still, uh, we studied uh, how to do research on, on this level. So for this level, I think it's sufficient. Uh, and uh, networking, uh, new alumni, uh, professors, classmates. Uh, so I, I, I stay in touch with, um, with everybody. Um, for example, here on this photo, you can see it was a new alumni uh, photo shoot. Uh, in August this year, um, and uh, it was like um, like an, uh, their project, and being a part of it, uh, actually, um, I, for example, like uh, there uh, in this photo shoot, I talked to other alumni, and so we discussed like where we are right now, what, what, what we're doing, um, and in the future it can lead to some maybe mutual projects, joint projects, or something, because we are all leaders and we are. All, all like working um, for something good. <clears throat> so this was my experience. Um, thanks for listening to me. And you can ask some questions if you want to. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I like the photos and hugs to your cat. <laughs> I seen from the chat box that there, here is, we have many, many cat lovers. Yeah. So um, thank you, Elizabeth. Arelam and Galina. So now the floor is open for the questions. 
if we have um, some questions uh, from our audience um, to ask from the students, first year, second year, or alumni of this program, please feel free to switch on your audio and ask a question. Yeah, I have a question to ask. Uh, yes, please. Gal Galina, yeah. She's been to many countries in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and another country. So I, I want to know how the difference between the, the educational system or method or strategy from each country, how they, they do differently. And which one is the best? Can you share me the method, the style, the culture of learning and teaching by each country have? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there is the best system. Uh, all of them have advantages and disadvantages. And um, uh, the countries where I worked, uh, the educational system is rapidly changing. It's developing, it's, it's um, evolving, just like in Kazakhstan. Um, so there are national curricula that uh, local schools follow, similar to what you have, uh, Kazakhstan has, for example, national curricula, curriculum, and there are international curriculum. For example, I teach at GCSE, Cambridge curriculum. So it's different curriculum, it's British uh, curriculum. Um, so th these are different ways of educating people. Um, they're not exactly the same. So it's difficult for me to answer your question um, in that regard. But overall, uh, every experience uh, is interesting. It has been interesting. Um, Malaysia is probably one of my favorite places uh, to work uh, because people speak English here. So it's much easier for me to navigate the country and the culture. And they also have an, um, many cultures together and ethnicities, just like here in Kazakhstan. It's much easier to relate to people compared to the Middle East. Uh, where they are primarily monoculture, or China, for example, uh, it's much harder to uh, fit in uh, if you do not speak the language or don't understand their culture or not part of them. However, it still can be interesting to travel and live there. You'll still make friends with expats, for example, like in the Middle East. It's all around expats. Yes, so uh, if this answers um, your question. Yeah. So how about in the Middle East? Um, uh, I think I think let's stick to the uh, program. Do you have any questions about the program? Any my experience uh, in, in the program? I think we're talking about G GSC here. No, I mean in general that you have experience in the Middle East country. It, it was a good experience. Yes, generally speaking, it was an interesting experience. There were ups and downs. Generally, it was useful to have it. Okay. Thank you for the question. Um, do we have other questions? I see one question from Munira. What backgrounds are eligible for the application to MSc in, in school education? Yeah, I understand that. that what, what should be the undergrad degree to apply for the MSc program at GEC? So the uniqueness of the GEC programs is that you don't have to have specific undergrad degree to apply for any programs, at least if you have experience in school education or working in the education field, you can actually apply for the program. So all people interested in the program are welcome to apply. Are there any other questions? So while um, we wait for some questions or feedback or just comments, um, let me continue and actually um, finalize my presentation that I, I was not able to. So the overall MEC program has three specializations and we're talking about the school education today. The uniqueness of the program is that people uh, 
doing this degree can at the same time work in their workplaces. Why? Because this program is a low residency program, which means there will be some models, we call it intensive sessions, where students are expected to be on campus in North Sultan at Nazarbayev University campus. Other than that, all work assignments and stuff can be done online. And for example, this is the example of the um, teaching um, schedule. So you have three, two columns, pre-COVID times, the regular times when we used to teach in 2019 and part of the 2020, it was that students expected to be on campus three weeks on August, the first year, October two weeks, February and May. And during the COVID, COVID uh, we used to have the block scheduling. Arelam, would you like to share what was the, your experience about the block scheduling classes this fall semester? Uh, yes, we had each course like for three weeks. So two weeks intensive sessions, as I mentioned before, Mondays, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesdays and Thursdays are for asynchronous. So you study from three to seven. Uh, this is actually very convenient. Uh, when you study one thing and you collect everything in your mind, uh, you will understand it better. But uh, at the same time, uh, two, three weeks, uh, in my opinion, is not enough to study so many information about uh, one topic. Uh, first, we had an introduction to research course and then uh, academic English, by the way, is the whole semester at last. And then we had research methods, uh, reforms, uh, educational reforms, and fundamentals of school education. Thank you, Arela. So that was the block scheduling mode we used to have. So as Galina said, we're not sure yet about the spring semester, but if all the uh, overall situation will be good to have uh, in-person classes, we'll be start teaching in-person classes from the fall or even from the spring of next year. So the application period is now open to apply for the master's degree. As you can see, we have opened it on November 22nd. It's now open and all locals, uh, uh, local applicants, citizens of Kazakhstan are able to apply until the April 18th of the next year. And the international candidates will have a shorter period because of the visa and other stuff they need to prepare for their arrival. And the same deadlines will be applicable to the uh, submission of the IELTS or TOEFL certificates. Um, and here I would like to share um, the contact details uh, of our school. We are present in social media. And also you can visit our website, GEC in you, you do KZ, and also our email and phone numbers if you have any additional questions to ask. Other than that, I, I'm thanking all the speakers of today's session. And um, this is the end of our webinar. And I see that it's five minutes, 10 minutes until the five. So I'm, uh, I will no longer um, have your time here, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask now.